Hi guys, this is James from Wanderlust FP and today I'm going to show you how to batch export clips using Final Cut Pro 7. Now if you're using Final Cut Pro X or Adobe Premiere there is a completely different process for doing this. In fact in Final Cut Pro X it's incredibly difficult. So this is purely for Final Cut Pro 7. Right, so we've got our sequence with one clip or lots of clips that we'd like to export out and we don't want to export them as one long file, we want to do them as independent, individual files, even if it's the same file. So for example here I have this file here, and I'll connect them together, and I'm just going to cut it randomly for you. Like that. Okay, so I've got this one clip, and then I've got it repeated again, that's been chopped up with different ins and out points, and I want to export this out so that this one is an independent track, this one is an independent track, and this one is an independent track. So once you've got all of your clips onto your timeline and you're ready to export them, what you need to do is set markers at each point. So you need to set a marker at the beginning and at the end of each track that you want to export. And what that'll do is that'll say to Final Cut, these are the ins and outs that I want to use for this track. So this one and you can create these markers just by pressing command M. So now each track has a marker at the beginning and one at the end. Now what I need to do is create a new bin. So I'm just going to go right click and new bin. And I'm just going to call this batch one just to keep my stuff nice and organized. Now I'm going to select everything on the timeline by hitting command A and I'm going to drag the information that I've selected on the timeline, not the sequence itself, but the information on the timeline into this folder. And now you can see that all of my clips are in my batch folder, and if I just click on the drop down, the markers are also there. And these markers, if I drag it out and show you, have in and out points set. So here you can actually see how it's worked. So my Footage comes in at this time, it comes out at that time. Marker 1 comes in at that time, and it comes out at that time. So you can see how the two things are working together here. Once I've done that, just minimize that to make it a little bit easier to see. Select my folder that I want to export. Right click and select Batch Export. That will bring up this new Batch Exporter window. And you can do multiple folders, so you don't just have to do one. You could set up several folders like this put them all into here and then apply your settings. Now this is exactly the same setup after this point as what you would do to normally export your footage using Final Cut Pro, but what we're going to do is just run through the settings anyway. So we're going to click on the folders that we want to export. In this instance it's all of these ones here. We're going to go settings and first thing you need to do is set the destination that you want to export your files to. So for me it doesn't really matter, I'll just select my desktop, but you want to make sure that you put it somewhere that's easy to find. So there you go. And then we want to go into the format. Now for this instance I want to maintain my QuickTime format, but you might want to apply uh, MPEG-4 or turn it into an image sequence, it's entirely up to you. But for this instance I want to keep it as QuickTime. And then for the settings, these are your codecs. So you might want to use your Apple ProRes 444 codec here. Um, depending on where you're uploading it. If you're doing it as stock footage, a lot of the stock companies want you to use like the 422HQ or the standard 422 or H264 codecs, but this is where you get to select your codec. Also your audio format. Now remember you, you can't refine these options later, so this is everything that you can apply. So let's run through an example here. The Apple ProRes 422HQ, I might want to export my footage at 1080, so I find my 1080 clip, and that's all of these, and I want to maintain my 25 frames per second frame rate, and I want to export my audio at a 48 kilohertz. So I'll just select that one, and there you go. If you wanted to do it with H.264, it will be in this list. Sorry, the list is just huge, but it's in this list. Just find it, make sure that you keep the frame rate and the file size Sorry, make sure that you keep the frame rate, so your frames per second, your 
resolution and your audio all within the same settings as your sequence or what's in line with the guidelines provided by the area that you want to then use the footage for later. So if you want to upload it to the internet, make sure that you pick a codec, a size, a frame rate and an audio rate that's supported by that. Uh, your naming options. This is a custom area where you can apply different naming options to it if you want to, but we'll just leave that blank for now. And you can decide whether you want to export the audio only or the video only or the audio and the video together. For this instance, I'm going to export the audio and the video together. I want to make a self-contained video. So that means that each one of these tracks will be self-contained. And I want to make sure I use item in and out. So that's what's going to say all of these markers that I've applied use them as in and out points for my individual clips. Now when I click OK and then click the export button because I've using, I'm using three tracks that are all identical it's gonna say hey these tracks are identical they have the same name you need to select a new name. Now this will do this for every track that you have a duplicate of so if you've cut up one track 50 times you're going to have to give it 50 different names. It's a little bit of a frustrating part of the process, but if you get the knack of it, you can do it really quick, relatively quickly. So what I like to do is just go underscore one and hit OK, and it will do it again. I'll just say underscore two and hit OK, and then it will start the rendering process for me. So as I was saying, if you've got lots of clips that are all the same and you need to export them, you might have to go through the naming convention several times. But other than that, it's a pretty straightforward process. If you've got any other questions, drop them in the comments and don't forget to check out the rest of our videos. Thanks for watching guys.